All right, so six months ago, I purchased a 2080 Ti refurbished off of NZXT's website, and it's a blower style car, and I've really been enjoying it. However, there's just one small issue with it. I don't know if you noticed or not, but it's pretty loud. I'm actually gonna go ahead and close out of the game because yeah, it's, it's uh, yeah. All right, that's better. So what I'm gonna do today is probably one of the most risky things that I've done computer build wise. We're gonna go ahead and take this blower style card and we're gonna mod it using the old Kraken G12. This has been around for quite a while, I think since like 2017, but it basically allows you to take any water cooler for a CPU and mount it onto your GPU. There are actually quite a few water coolers that are compatible with this, but I would just went ahead and picked up the Kraken X2 since I figured it's in the NZXT family, and then I wouldn't have to worry about compatibility. So this was 30 bucks, this is actually the black one, and then this was 70, so all together 100. And then I also picked up some heat sinks because I already know from researching that that cooler doesn't cover all the VRMs on the 2080 Ti because it's too big. There are some that are right before the cooler starts. So I got some of the little heat sinks to put on the VRMs. So we'll see how this turns out. And I know it's extremely risky because I won't be able to get another GPU, especially nothing like the 2080 Ti if I mess this up. But it's really annoying. I really haven't even been playing games since I got it just because it's so loud. And yeah, it's time. I'm willing to take the risk. It's got on my nerves that much. So let's see what happens. All right, so I am here with everything needed for this upgrade. I have the RTX 2080 Ti with the fancy casing. So this is actually the MSI RTX 2080 Ti Aero. And it's a blower style, like I mentioned earlier. So with the blower style, it's completely closed off pretty much. It just takes air in from this one fan and ejects it all the back of the card, which is good for cases that have bad airflow because it's not really affected by the airflow of the case, but it's really loud. Most people get these in pre-built computers or people buy these on purpose it's just to water cool. Not like this water cooling, but like, you know, real water cooling, like with a water block and tubes and all that stuff, but that's too expensive. This was the cheapest option that I had, so that's what we're gonna roll with today. Before we go any further, I'm gonna put on this little ESD bracelet because you can't be too careful in a period where you can't buy another graphics card if you accidentally destroy it, trying to water cool it. So let's get this on and let's go ahead and get this torn apart. The installation process overall is pretty straightforward. You just have to remove the IO shield from the graphics card, which in my case it sucks because two of the big screws I held it on were actually a part of the initial cooler that was on there. So now I just have two tiny screws holding the whole IO shield on. But it's fine. It still works, kind of. And then after that, you gotta take all the rest of the screws out, which in my case, there was about 20 screws of varying sizes. Then I got all the screws out and then I got confused because the graphics card didn't come apart easily and then I didn't want to pull on it. So it was actually off camera. I ended up pulling a little bit harder on it than I thought I would have to. And then finally it came apart. It looks like the thermal pads that were up there were actually pretty strong. So it was just stronger than what I expected. And then you go ahead and you attach the bracket. This one, I had to use the AMD bracket. I looked it up ahead of time, but it seems like a lot of the 20 series cards don't work with the included NVIDIA bracket because this thing's been around since the 10 series. So the AMD bracket for some reason works properly. So you have to use that. Then you put your thermal paste on, which you have to put a lot on for GPUs apparently. And I ended up not putting enough on. I actually had to redo it off camera later because yeah, that's the whole thing. And then after that, you go ahead and you attach the fan with the cooler. And then after that, you go ahead and you attach the AIO to the cooler. I went ahead and removed the pre-applied thermal paste just with some alcohol. And then you go ahead and screw the cooler into the fan and then that's pretty much it. And everything is wonderful. But hold on, because it's not actually what happened. So after I did that, which honestly took me about an hour, this was my first time taking apart a graphics card. 
So I was super nervous, but I booted up the system and I booted up fine, which I was happy about. And then I went to run Cyberpunk and then it got to like the initial loading screen and it just crashed. So I rebooted, tried it again and got in the game for about 30 seconds and crashed. I tried changing the fan profiles, it kept crashing. So I took the car back apart. Unfortunately, I didn't record any of this on video because it was pretty late on Sunday. I'm actually recording this last part on Tuesday, the day before this video goes up because it's a lot of messing around with this thing to get it to work properly. But ultimately, I had to do this. So I had to add another fan down here under the graphics card to blow on the memory and the VRM is the part that we're basically not being cooled by the fan that comes included because there's only a fan over here. Now, most cheaper cards or lowering cards, they're not going to have RAM and VRM on both sides, but the 2080 Ti does. And this kit doesn't include a fan to cover this side. I also put some heat sinks on the VRMs and RAM on this side. I didn't get that on video either, but they're just basically these little $8 ones that I got off of Amazon. So I put that up there along with the fan. The thing that messed me up the most and probably hurt my airflow was I accidentally bought 140 millimeter radiator instead of a 120. So I was originally gonna put this in the back of the case. I had my 240 at the top, but since I actually got a 140 instead of a 120, this case only fits 120 in the back. So I had to put this on top, which means I had to move my 120 to the front. And all the airflow or most of the airflow is coming in through the front and now it's obstructed by the AIO. So there's not as much air coming in the front to be exhausted or go through the components as I had before. So I think that also hurt the airflow as far as cooling the VRMs, but ultimately did it do what I needed to do? Is it a lot quieter? Well, you have a list and then you tell me. So for my sound test in both cases, I just had the Rode Wireless Go, just the microphone by itself, not the lapel mic that I'm using, about a foot away from the case. So it's not a super scientific test, but it's about where I'd be sitting if I was playing like online games, just to kind of see how bad it would be, like as far as people hearing noise over the headset. That's kind of what that test was for. So yes, it is a lot quieter and ultimately I got what I wanted, but this is kind of a janky solution and I don't feel like it's a long-term solution and I really don't recommend it. And it's not that this kit's horrible. Like this bracket was $30 and then I got this AIO for 70, but there's even cheaper AIOs you can get for this. Like for a water cooling solution for a graphics card is not bad. And if you have a less expensive card and you just want some cheap water cooling, this will probably work. It's still gonna be a bit janky just because of the way it's designed. The one thing I'll give it as well is the GPU temps are way better. Like on idle, I was getting around 56 before with the blower style and then now it's around like the mid 30s like around 35 and then under load i was at 80 like automatically pretty much and now the max it gets up to is like 70 and that's without this fan and the aio being on max i could probably bring it down a few degrees if i wanted to to sacrifice some more of the noise but i'm actually fine with it being at 70 degrees and that's usually like under max load after a while, it hits 70, but I haven't seen it go beyond 70. It usually hovers in the upper 60s. So it is a big improvement as far as thermals as well, if you're concerned about that. But overall, it would probably work fine. For like the 2080 Ti though, and like higher end cards, it's really not worth it. I wish I would have looked into it further. I knew about this thing already just because I kept coming across it even before I got interested in water cooling my graphics cards. So I already knew about it and I was like, oh, this would be a great time to finally get this and try it. But they actually have like a triple fan third party cooler that you can just buy for a graphics card and slap that up there. And that's probably gonna give you better coverage. Well, it will give you better coverage of your VRMs or RAM. And then it'll probably be cool enough where you don't need all this extra crap. Considering that this is an AIO, I had to, for one, plug this fan in had to find a slot for the fan that goes on here. And then I also had to find a slot for the fan that I had to put under here to keep the VRMs cool. And then this also takes up a USB 2.0 slot on the motherboard because this is a software controlled AIO. 
So it's just a lot of extra cabling as well. And with a triple fan one, you might have to deal with three fans, but you can always get a splitter and just connect it to one fan header. It seems like it's a lot less hassle, even though from the comments I read, it says the installation is a hassle, but this was not easy. And I watched other videos on this and this seemed pretty easy and I was pretty confident going in, but then at the end of it, especially after having my car crash like three or four times, and it really scared me. And I was just like, I don't really want to do this anymore. But ultimately, I got what I wanted. It's just like if you have a kind of expensive card, like a 2080 Ti, like even if you find one used at a decent deal like I did, and it's like a blower style and you really can't stand it because it really is truly awful. Like the, the card is so loud, it's hard to deal with. I would look into like a triple fan cooler, but if you don't want to spend a lot of money. I did see another option that was like an AIO with a water block combined, and I'd be definitely be down for that, but I just didn't see any available in the US. I think it was from Alpha Cool. Like I couldn't find any US availability. They had like a different brand one on eBay for $300, but it seemed kind of risky. So I was like, uh, I don't want to do that. So for now, I am going to stick with this because it seems to be working fine. I've been testing it over the last few days, just leaving games running for hours in the background just to make sure it doesn't crash. But yeah, that's where I'm at with this. So was this fun to tinker around with? Yeah, it was my first time taking apart a graphics card, so I'm pretty sure a lot of the issues came from me being inexperienced. And it's kind of fun to tinker around with this stuff, but at the same time, especially right now where you, you can't get a graphics card, like if I would have broke this, then I'd literally be SOL. It's really scary. So if you really can't stand your fan, like if you get to the point where I did after six months where you really can't stand your fan, look into a better option than this. Even if you do have like a smaller car where it probably work better for. Like this is quiet. It's really quiet. I'll give it that. It's probably going to be quieter than that triple slot cooler, but it's not like open air air coolers are that loud anyway. It's just blower styles are ridiculously loud. So, I mean, I'd go with an open air air cooler if I had one. Like if my car came with one, I wouldn't have done this, honestly. But yeah, overall, it's not a bad product. It's cheap. It's $30. It's highly adaptable, but it's hard to recommend just because of how janky it is. And with this setup, I don't know how long it's going to last. But that's going to bring today's video to a conclusion. Thank you for coming on this crazy journey with me. And if you enjoyed this video, then make sure to tell a friend, tell a coworker, like, share, and subscribe. And always do at least two things at the same time. Peace.